Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. An investigation into a deadly officer-involved shooting in Rapid City is now in the hands of the South Dakota DCI. Rapid City Police Chief Don Hedrick says it happened shortly after 10 o'clock Mountain Time last night. Officers were in the area of Surfwood Drive and Maple Street when they engaged with the person. That person ran away and an officer chased them. The officer in person then got into a fight and the officer attempted to use a taser. At that point, the uh, individual he was chasing pointed a firearm at the police officer. Uh, the police officer fired upon the individual that pointed the gun at him. Officials have not released the name of the person killed. Chief Hedrick says that the officer was not hurt. A former Sioux Falls police officer was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison Thursday for sending sexually explicit messages to someone he believed to be a child. Authorities arrested 29-year-old Luke Schauer in February of 2022 after he was caught sending illegal messages to an FBI agent posing as a 12-year-old girl. Last September, he made a plea deal and two charges were dropped, including attempted production of child pornography. Schauer lost his job as a police officer as soon as officials learned about the situation. Authorities are looking for a Clark County man in connection with a missing nine-year-old girl. 48-year-old Jeffrey Yexley is wanted for kidnapping. This week, authorities issued a warrant for his arrest. In online court records, Yexley is listed in a guardianship case involving Brooklyn Ford. There was a hearing last Friday, which was the same day Ford disappeared. The nine-year-old is currently listed on the state's missing persons clearinghouse website. Ford was last seen at Bradley Christian School and was wearing a red tie-dyed sweatshirt, a blue and black coat, and carrying a black backpack. Yexley also has a warrant for failing to appear in court this week on drug charges. The Day County case allegedly involves meth and drug paraphernalia. Officials in Grant County say the quick response time to a fire helped save a home. Grant County Emergency Management says Revillo Fire was called to the scene just after 9.30 Wednesday night. They posted these pictures of the scene to Facebook. A camper and garage were engulfed in flames. The garage, camper, and a pickup were destroyed. Because the garage was close to the house, you can see some siding was melted off part of the home. Now let's get a check of our weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Well, as we're looking at weather today, some fog out there in spots. Also plenty of uh, piles or spots of snow and even black ice. Be careful about that. That's an ongoing problem with these type of mornings where you get some freezing mist in the air, any of the residual snow on the ground, and any of that little bit of blowing snow yesterday. It makes for rural highways to be quite tricky in spots. There's that satellite map, low clouds and fog, mainly along and east of the Missouri River. And again, it's been patchy dense fog. So I think today we'll recover in the lower to middle 20s in Sioux Falls. Same uh, pattern there for Aberdeen. Rapid City, a little bit warmer at 38. A full look at your weekend forecast is coming up. Thank you, Brian. Snow piles are getting so high in some Sioux Falls neighborhoods, you need a ladder to look over them. We found a drift alongside a home on the southeast part of the city that stood towering 10 feet high. The drift was also blocking a side door to Stan Raider's house. I think it's because there's a wind that goes between these buildings over here and it just sweeps around. Raider says he's just glad he doesn't have to snow blow such a tall drift up against his house. We all know college is expensive these days. A lot of students struggle to find the money to pay for it. Kate Fredrickson is paying for his last semester of tuition one snowflake at a time. He's earned enough money this winter, $40 an hour scooping snow to complete his degree in health management. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of chipping away at it, using money from this to uh, put towards that. Fredrickson is completing his coursework online, which gives him the flexibility to earn while he learns. The National Music Museum is now open to the public and celebrating a big anniversary. Last night, the museum revealed its 50th anniversary exhibit. It highlights some of the most unique pieces in their collection. This exhibit is just the first phase of the reopening process. So this exhibit will stay up through sometime in the fall. I don't know that we've set a closing date yet with that. But overlapping that then will be the opening of our first floor galleries in August. And that will include our American Guitar Gallery, our Gamelon Gallery, and a number of other uh, galleries that, that we have. 
The 50th anniversary exhibit is open to the public with free admissions on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturdays from noon to 4. Following the Jackrabbits' win over the Bison in the FCS National Championship, a new man will be taking charge of the team. 26-year head coach John Stegelmeyer began his career in 1997. Coach Steg has won 199 games, including a national championship earlier this month. But now the all-time winningest coach in SUSU history is retiring. His replacement was announced on Thursday with defensive coordinator Jimmy Rogers, promoted to head coach and taking the reins. He'll be introduced at a press conference this morning beginning at 10 o'clock. You can watch a live stream of the event right here on Kelloland.com. That's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, our day today, well, we're starting off with new snow on the ground, obviously from the system from yesterday. And where are we this winter so far? The grand totals. That's a lot of snow. You know, some of this is melted, obviously, but still being over 40 inches, even over 50 inches in winter. The southern part of Ketherland, no doubt about it, it has been very active. We've got a number of the other locations that are far less, Aberdeen, Pier, Rapid City, all a couple of inches either side of 20 inches. So that pacing is a little bit, I would say, a little closer to what we would normally see. Obviously, this weekend, uh, being sensitive to any chance of precipitation, I think we're going to be fine. We're not looking at any major storm tracks. The biggest problem will be kind of that cycle of patchy fog, residual black ice, and just some of those normal now things that just, well, simply put, they are normal for several of us that are dealing with these thicker blankets of snow. You can't really escape that. I do expect, though, temperatures for the weekend uh, fairly seasonable. Mid to upper 20s in Sioux Falls tomorrow. Uh, that's right there in the ballpark of where we should be for this time of year. Pier, Rapid City, could be a little bit warmer tomorrow, especially if we can get some sun. The, the thing about this pattern, too, is that your moisture is pretty shallow, a lot of it uh, closer to the ground level. But, yeah, if you can get just enough mixing, you can kind of scour that out at times, and that would sure be nice. Hopefully, we'll see something changing there uh, for parts of the weekend. The wind, though, overall is still fairly light. Uh, the reason for that, well, of course, number one, we don't have any big storms around us. And also, we're so thick on the snow, we kind of act like an insulator on the, the wind. So we're not able to kind of root that down too much. And the bottom line is, exception being Rapid City, we could see a little gust of wind tonight there, 20 to 35. But vast majority of folks here, pretty light through the weekend. Maybe an uptick by Monday morning. We'll see how that pans out in the far north. And next week's pattern, while it looks a little more active this weekend to our south, we'll miss that storm. There it goes through Kansas into the Ohio River Valley. We'll see what this northwest flow pattern brings next week. I have a pretty strong suspicion initially it's not going to be too bad for us. We're going to see some uh, numbers on the temperatures that are pretty close to normal or certainly not freezing cold. I would, though, be careful at some point that pattern is going to get colder. But we're going to kick that story out for several more days. That's okay. All right, 28 today, Chamberlain, 30. Winter lows tonight. We're down in the mid to upper teens in the east, 7 degrees in Aberdeen. Tomorrow, mixed bag of upper 20s, low 30s from Mitchell to uh, Huron and also Brookings for Saturday. That's not bad. We'll see Sioux Falls near 20 on Sunday, maybe slightly cooler. The ups and downs, though, it doesn't look like any major melting. We're not even forecasting 32 yet. Uh, we'll see how next week goes. There's an opportunity maybe Monday to get a little warmer than our current forecast. No mention of snow for Aberdeen for now. Uh, we're going to wait and see on that. I think Pierre also primarily a dry forecast at this time with 30s for highs for the weekend. And Rapid City, we could hit 40 this weekend, absolutely. And not far from that level early next week. Check out the details with your forecast online at Kevoland.com.